Losing loved ones is a part of life. There's no avoiding it. For Angelo Merendino, that dark time in his life happened in December 2011 when he lost the love of his life. His wife Jennifer passed away at the age of 40 after a long battle with cancer. As a way to cope with the tragedy unfolding before him, he did the only thing he knew how to do, take pictures. His images can be seen in a book called The Battle We Didn't Choose, My Wife's Battle with Breast Cancer. Angelo, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dee. It's great to be here. Before we talk about your photographs, I want to talk about the person who inspired them. Tell me about meeting Jennifer and, and how you knew what you knew. I met Jennifer on August 29th, 2005. Uh, I was applying for a job at the Fulton Bar and Grill over in Ohio City. And there was a sign on the door that said, uh, out for supplies, you know, back at maybe two or something like that. And so I sat down to wait. And I saw a, a black VW Beetle pull into the parking lot. And I stood up and walked around the corner to greet whoever it was. And when I turned the corner, I saw Jennifer. I just knew it. It wasn't just that Jennifer was beautiful more beautiful than, than anyone I had ever saw in my life, but there was just this energy that was coming from her, and she had this smile that just made you happy. So she didn't feel the earth shake the way that I did. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't feel it at all, actually. But you wore her down and convinced her. I am stubborn as the last of 11 children. They will, all my brothers and sisters will tell you that, and I was determined. It took me a while. I couldn't work up the courage to tell her I was crazy about her. And she moved to Manhattan a month after we met because she uh, was hired by L'Oreal. And so we kept in touch, but I just couldn't work up the courage and didn't think she would want to date a guy like me. So I finally did, and I, I told her I had a crush on her, like a third grader. <laughs> And I'm kicking myself thinking, I can't believe you just said that. But then she lit up and she said, I feel the same way. So that was our beginning. And then the shadow started to, to, to move in. She was mm -hmm. diagnosed uh, once and then beat it for a while and then mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. At what point did you say, I'm going to keep a record of this? I always made photographs of Jennifer and pretty much our life, but it was very loose. There wasn't really a, a purpose behind it. It was more like, oh, that looks all right, or we're doing this, here's a photograph. And so Jennifer was diagnosed in February of 2008, and that was five months after our wedding. And you know, I still remember the sound of her voice on the phone when she told me she had just received a call from the doctors, and they said she had breast cancer. And I was numb. I can't imagine how numb Jen was, but at that point, our life, it was nonstop. It was this new world that we had no idea how to navigate through. Thankfully, our support group was incredible. Our family and friends were right there. They came to visit when Jen felt up for it. Uh, they would send dinner. They held benefits to help us with the medical costs. And without them, I don't know how we could have made it through that time. So it was about a seven to eight month period with the double mastectomy, chemotherapy, radiation, and reconstructive surgery. And then our doctors told us that Jen was cancer free. And we started to put our life back together, which was challenging because we felt so different and nothing was the same. You know, our thoughts were in such a different place than they ever had been before. And so that was just past our one year anniversary that that happened. And in April of 2010, that's when Jen's cancer metastasized to her liver and bone. And as we started treatment again, we started to notice that people didn't really understand what we were going through. And in hindsight, I'm happy that they didn't understand because if they would have understood it the way that we did, that would have meant that they had gone through that in their own life. So you know, how could they know what we were facing if they hadn't been in our shoes? And our words were really failing 
as we attempted to share with people how much help we needed. And that's when we started thinking, well, if people see what we're going through, people meaning our family and friends, then maybe they'll understand. You know, a photograph is such a powerful way to describe something. I, th I think there are many things that only a photograph can describe. So um, around, it was probably January of 2011, that's when I really started making photographs of everything and, and just really trying to make photographs of things that moved me. I didn't really think much. The camera was always there and I remember each of these moments. I remember the way the air felt in that photograph where Jen's eyes were closed and the sun was coming down on her and it was this beautiful moment where she just said, hold on, stop. And despite the fact that she had to use a walker and she had a pain pump that was pushing methadone through her system, she realized that beautiful moment where the sun was shining on her and she just stopped and closed her eyes. And I, I remember thinking, that's a, a lesson I'll remember the rest of my life. So I think there are a lot of lessons for, for me to learn from in these photographs as long as I am open to them. Yeah, and for us as viewers too, thank you for sharing them as well. Thank you, Dee. My guest has been Angelo Merendino. His book is The Battle We Didn't Choose, My Wife's Fight with Breast Cancer. For more on Angelo and his wife Jennifer's story and a link to images, log on to our homepage online at applause.ideastream.org.